Greetings, it is Max so Diddly here, and today I'm here with another Java tutorial to you get an A in your coursework or exam. And today we're here with reading multiple records from a text or CSV file. So this is a remake or another way to approach this topic as I did cover this in a previous tutorial. There will be a night up in the corner if you are curious. So let's get right into it. Okay, this is our main function, and we've actually got some code in here. The main function is called when the program is first launched. We're going to come back to this after we actually write our read records function. So, let's get right into everything. So, we've got a public static string array list method, and it's going to be called read records. An array list is simply a class which adds more functionality to what an array does. So an array list can be dynamic, so it can change size while an array can't. There are also many other useful functions an array, ha an array list has. There will be an eye up in the corner if you are curious to learn more, but you don't need that for this tutorial. And it's uh, public, so this can be accessed from other classes. Static have this if you're using a static class, otherwise you can get rid of this. And we need to pass in some parameters. String file path. This is going to be a string, and it's going to be the name of the file. And maybe where it's located, so it's the file path. Search term. What does a record need to contain to be something we want to return to where this function is called? And then int position a search term is which field in a record can we expect to find this search term? So let's give an example. We have ID, name and age. And these are the three fields that make up a record. Let's say our search term is going to be Bill. Well, that's a name. So it's going to be in the name field. And the name field is the second field of a record because the first field is the ID and the third one is the name. So we'd pass in a two. And string delimiter is essentially what separates fields and records. In this case, it's going to be a comma, but it could be something else if you want. Next, we're going to be doing int position equals position of term, which is this integer right here, minus one. So why are we doing this? Well, in the world of arrays, indexes start from 0 and not 1. So if we were to apply the array index logic to what I said before, it would be field 0 is the ID, field 1 is the name, and field 2 is the age. Now that's more confusing to someone who's just going to be calling this function. It's not how most humans tend to think. So we're going to just do a bit of housekeeping here so we can keep this more human readable. You don't have to if you want to, but we're doing it this way. You can just not include this if you want to. After we're going to do string current line, this is just going to store the current line we are reading in the file. String data is going to store the current record we're reading. So we get the current line and then we're going to split that into the fields that make up the record which is current line and we're going to have each field of its own array element to make it easier to interact with and that's what string data will be and this array list called return data which can be created by doing this is simply going to store all the records we want to read because they match the search term that we've given and it's an array list because we won't know how many records are going to match and before reading the file. So we need to be able to change the size of the array list, which is why we're using an array list and not an array. Now we're using now we're gonna need to do a try catch statement. So it's try and then those two little brackets that you see for if statements and loops. Then we have catch exception e, then system.out.println e. What's going on here? Try a bunch of code. If something goes wrong, execute what's in the catch. Otherwise, just carry on. Uh, we can print out E to basically print the error message so we have a better idea on what's going on. 
but you can put what you want. Now we need to create two objects. File reader fr equals new file reader and file path. File reader is going to be the object responsible for reading the file. And we called it fr because it's short for file reader, but I would advise you give a better name. And we pass in file path, which is our string here. This is basically like passing someone a book and saying, hey, can you read this for me, please? And then buffered reader, I'm not going to go into what this does, but I recommend you add it for good practice. So it's buffered reader br, over again, I'd give it a better name, equals new buffered reader, and then we pass in fr, which is our file reader. After that, we want to do a while loop. So let's go and break down this while loop so you understand what it does. We want to do while current line equals br.readline. So current line is the string here, and br is the buffer reader that we made. And what essentially we're doing is, each time we go through this while loop, current line will be set to the next line in the file. However, we're not just doing that. We're also then going to check if that's equal to null or not. So an exclamation mark before a boolean operator or a boolean is essentially checking for the opposite. Because the opposite of true is false and the opposite of false is true. So we're essentially checking if it's not equal to null. It will be equal to null if there's no more lines to read in the file and then the while loop will terminate. So it's a quick handy way to update the current line we're reading while also then checking if there's anything else to read in the file. So then we do data, which is our string array, equals current line dot split comma. So we've got a record here that we've just read and there are commas to separate each field and dot split essentially read up to everything up to the comma and put that in its own element of the array, then read everything up to the next comma, and then put that in its own element of the array, and we continue this until we've read the whole string. So now we've got each element, no, each field of the record in its own element of an array to make it easy to interact with. Then we do if data, which is the string array, which we've just added our record to, and then we're gonna put in the square brackets position, which is here, which we determine based on the position of the term, and they want to check if it equals the search term, which is what we want to use to identify if we want to read the record or not. So we're checking the right field of the record and checking if it matches the search term. This is going back to the explanation I did earlier in the video. We only want to see if the name is in the right field of a record, then what we do is return data. This is the array list we made and we want to add the current line because it's clearly a record that matches the criteria to be read. Underneath the while loop, we need to do br.close and fr.close. We just need to close these uh, readers as that's good practice. And then we want to do return and then we want to put return data, which is just going to return this array list. We also need to do a return return data under the try catch in case an error occurs before this return line is called and any function or method that returns something needs to have a return statement that's accessible no matter what path the code takes. So that's it for the function. Let's go into what we've got in our main method now. So string file name records.txt, that's the name of the file we're going to read. Then we've got array list string records we're creating an array list and we're going to make it equal to the array list the read records function is going to return and we're passing in some data here which we'll go back to then we're doing a for loop for int i equals zero i less than records dot size and i plus plus basically we're just going to loop through every element of the array list and we're then we're just going to do system dial dot print line a records dot get and i because we're going to basically read and then print out every every element of this array list, which will be every record we've read that we wanted to read. And that's it. So with regards to the file path, 
we have put a records.txt in the default project directory. So we can just do records.txt. Now you could make a folder and then put records inside. And then you would need to do uh, the folder name slash then the name of the file. It's using their relative file path. And inside we have got a bunch of records. We got the ID, the name and the age. So let's say for our first test, we're going to read the records of everyone who is 78 years old. So we do file name which we're passing in our file name here. We're going to do 78, as that's going to be the age we're looking for. We're going to put in a number 3, because it's the third position or field of the record. And a comma, because it's a comma-separated value file. Before we start, though, make sure at the top of your code to import the following libraries. Buffered reader, file reader, and array list. Let's click play. As you can see, we've got three records that have been printed. Danka, Joe, and Bill. All of them have the age of 78. In our little text file, as you can see, it printed everyone with the age of 78. Now, let's change this. We want to print out everyone who has the name Bill. So we're going to change that 78 to Bill, and we're going to pass in a 2 instead of a 3. We're going to be passing in a 2 as it's the name field of a record, not the age. And the name field is the second field, and not the third. So we change that to a 2. Let's click play. As you can see, it's given us all of the records that has Bill as the name. As you can see, there are three people called Bill, and it's printed all the details for them. So that's it for this tutorial. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. If you've got any questions or suggestions for tutorials, be sure to leave a comment. Subscribe if you want to see more programming tutorials to help you get that A in your course for Core Exam. Thanks for being a great audience and I will see you next time.